Okay, so I'm now going to set up a Loki data source on my Grafana Cloud instance. If we look at what was created early on in the course where I set up the Grafana server manually, I set up a Loki data source where I pointed it to a Loki service running on the same server as my Grafana server. I then also installed a Promtail service, which was also on the same server, and that was collecting logs. And through the Loki data source set up in the Grafana user interface, I could query that data being gathered by Promtail. So when setting this up on the cloud, it's slightly different. This is my cloud instance of Grafana. That's the URL, sbcode.grafana.net. I'm going to set up the Loki data source, and it will give me a URL that I can push data to. So with the Promtail service that's running on my existing Grafana server, I'll reconfigure it to point directly to my cloud-hosted Grafana instance instead. So the difference here, instead of manually installing a Loki service on my Grafana server or somewhere that my Grafana server can access, I'm now using the Loki data source that I'll configure inside my Grafana cloud instance. So Promtail will instead send to that one. So back into your Grafana account on grafana.com here, Loki, click the details. And your information, of course, will be different than mine. But anyway, I need to create an API key. Okay, so generate that now. The key will be used to push data to Loki. So create anything you like. So Promtail Publisher seems like a good one for me. And the role is a metrics publisher. You can leave the admin if you like. So create the API key. Okay, that's done. Now I'm going to change this after the video, so it will be different. And also your key will be different as well. Don't share that. This is a secret that you shouldn't really share with anyone. But I'm going to change mine after this video is over. So it's a different one. You can delete them and create new ones. Okay, close that. Anyway, scrolling down, sending logs from a standalone host. This is referring to Promtail. You go into your Promtail config and you'll add a URL being in the form of that. So on this diagram, I'm going to edit my Promtail configuration with that long URL, which points to that. OK, so I've SSH'd onto my server where I've got my existing Loki and Promtail running. And that happens to be my OSS version of Grafana that I've created early on in the course. But anyway, I'm just going to modify the Promtail. Remember, when we installed the Promtail binary, we installed it into the user local bin folder. So I'm going to go back to there. You see the user local bin and just look at that. Okay, so there's config promtail YML. I'm going to edit that. So config promtail YML. And all the settings are good, except this URL is no longer pointing to the local version of Loki. So I'm going to delete that. But through this new URL here, which contains my key that I just generated, plus the full URL. So just copy that. And in Promtail here, if you right click, it will paste that whole line in. So that's it there. It's quite a long line. It's, that is good. So Control X to save. Yes. Now you should restart Promtail, but first I'm just going to double check that in my Grafana instance. So my Grafana Cloud instance here, down in Data Sources, Grafana Cloud SB Code Logs, click that. And if we look at it, the basic auth details being the user and the password is already configured. This was created automatically. As it says here, this data source was added by config and cannot be modified in the UI. So it's already good. Okay, so I can even test that and it says testing. Okay, data source connected and labels found. But there's actually no data in there yet because I haven't actually restarted that Promtail server. So to send to that endpoint just yet. But we'll do that now. So sudo service Promtail restart. Let's check its status. Okay, it's looking good so far. Okay, control C to get out of that. If I go to explore there, and select SB code logs, click log browser, and it's already showing me those labels that I've set up. So there's auth log and there was syslog. These were things set up in the course earlier on. So let's look at var logs and show logs. Log volume is loading. There we go, and there's a whole lot of information. Okay, so remember we've looked a lot at Promtail and Loki earlier in the course, so you can do all those things now throughout your cloud instance. Okay, so looking at that image again, I've repointed that Promtail to look at that instead. So I'm no longer using that Grafana server I've installed there. Now also, if you have another Promtail service running somewhere else, it's the same process. That URL that I got from the settings screen, I put that in that Promtail service and restart it as well. And I can have multiple Promtails all pushing to my Loki data source there, like so. I'm not going to do that at the moment because I'm still not fully aware of whether that will take me over the free allowance or not. These are things that you should keep an eye on. Remember, you can always go to your 
Grafana default page there and you'll see that the logs information should increment over time. You want to make sure you don't go above 50 gigabytes in one month. So just be careful of that if you're worried about spending extra money. Okay, and looking at the data sources again for Loki, SB code logs, we can look at insights and there's nothing to see here just yet, but we'll start to see these graphs update and that will give us a good indication of whether we're going over the free limit or not. Excellent. In the next video, I'll set up my Prometheus service to push to my Grafana Cloud instance. Excellent.